Welcome back Syracuse Math Kitties. In today's video, we're going to tackle lesson number four in our math packet, module four, which deals with exponent properties. We are going to be looking at rule number three, okay? And we have a little sample problem here. And before we continue and move on to solving any of your problems here, we're going to study our sample problem so that we can have a good understanding of what we are being asked. So go ahead and uh, let's read this. It says, when dividing powers of 10, the exponent in the denominator is subtracted from the exponent in the numerator. This makes sense because, okay, and then let's, let's, let's look at this right here. Okay, this makes sense because 10 to the 9th divided by 10 to the 3rd, all right? This is just our sample problem. Is equal to 10 to, 10 to the 3rd power times 10 to the 6th power divided by 10 to the 3rd power, okay? Then we can, um, as you guys can see, the 10 to the 3rd power and 10 to the 3rd power divided by 10 to the 3rd power, those two cancel and they become 1, right? And then all we have left here is 10 to the sixth power, right? So this, the answer is 10 to the sixth power. Now you can go through, um, you know, kind of showing your work this way, or you can also actually show work just by using this, um, this rule here. So in other words, um, 10 to the ninth power divided by 10 to the third power is equal to 10 to the 9th minus 3rd is equal to 10 to the 6th because 9 minus 3 is 6. Okay, now before we move on, let me kind of um, show you how this rule, rule number 3, kind of incorporates rule number 1 that we learned earlier. So let me, let's refer back to our rule number 1. Okay, hold on, this is not cooperating with me. Hold up. All right, so rule number one says, when you're multiplying two powers of 10, you're going to just add the exponents, right? So here, let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, how do we know, how do we know that 10 to the ninth, okay, how do we know that 10 to the 9th is going to be equal to 10 to the 3rd times 10 to the 6th. Well, that's because of our rule number 1, right? Our rule number 1, number 1 says, okay, rule number 1 says, when we have um, a power of 10 multiplied by another power of 10, we are going to add the exponents. Okay, and so 3 plus 6 adds up to 9. Now, a whole lot of other numbers will add up to 9, all right? Uh, 1 and 8 adds up to 9. Um, 2 and 7 adds up to 9. But the reason we chose, um, the sample problem chose 3 and 6 is because um, on the bottom here, we have 10 to the third, right? So if we break down the top part, into 10 to the 3rd and 10 to the 6th, then as you guys see, we get to cancel part of it. It makes our, our, our life a lot easier. But anyways, you know, when you're solving um, these problems down here, um, you're definitely not required to show all of this work here. This is just for you um, to really understand what's going on in the background. You know, how do you, how, why does it make sense? Why does this keep popping back hold on you guys okay so it just you know this this sample problem is just showing you um why rule number three totally makes sense all right but you know for sake of doing your work this is this is all you have to remember okay and then of course with each of these additional lessons we are always remembering previous rules right? Because definitely rule number one came in handy here. All right, so number one, you're going to have one freebie, 
because this is something that we did not learn before and it's something that actually you just need to remember it okay there's like a long proof or explanation as to why anything to the zeroth power is equal to one all right so for now i'm not going to go into detail why that is all you have to know is that any number that you you know raise to a power of zero is going to be equal to one right so then you're just going to apply this rule up here to any of these to solve them okay so for example this one right here we have 10 to the 3 minus 3 right because we are subtracting the um the exponents right when we are dividing two powers of 10 and so because we know 3 minus 3 is 0 then this is 10 to the 0th power, which is 1. Okay, which in a way, in a way, this proves or shows you why something to a 0th power is equal to 1. Okay, so you kind of get that explanation there. Then with this one right here, you're just going to calculate each one individually and then add them up. Okay, then for number 2, just make sure that you do each part one by one and you know that's, don't skip steps don't forget previous rules so let me see i'm gonna do one here i wonder which one you guys would find the most complicated so let me see uh i don't know i guess let's let's just do this one right here i'll just do the first one so we have 10 to the third power times 10 to the fourth power now remember Rule number one, okay, when we are multiplying two powers of 10, we're going to add the exponents. So we're going to have 10 to the third plus four divided by 10 to the fifth power. There's nothing happening on the bottom. We're just going to carry it over. Okay, and that's equal to 10 to the seventh power divided by 10 to the fifth power. Okay, so up here we actually used rule number one okay we solved for that and now we have 10 to the seventh divided by 10 to the fifth power okay and now we're going to apply rule number three okay and so we have 10 to 7 minus minus 5 and that is equal to 10 to the second power all right and then we know that if we want to really take it all the way to the end we know that the 2 or the exponent tells us that we're going to multiply 10 by with itself twice. And we know that that's 100. All right. So there you have it. Uh, take, a, take a stab at these guys right here. If you're struggling with them, of course, um, you know, as usual, look at, um, look at the sample problem. Try to copy what's being done there. If you still don't understand it after looking at the sample problem again, I would most definitely reach out to Ms. Perrine or to myself, Ms. G. We will be uh, more than happy to help you. And then number three is a challenge question. All right, let's read that. The sun is roughly 10 to the second power times as wide as Earth, right? The star KW is roughly 10 to the fifth power times as wide as Earth. About how many times as wide as the sun is kW? All right, explain how you know. Okay, so we are comp comparing sun and kW, right? So sun is 10 times, so sun is 10 to the second as as big as wide as earth and this kw star is 10 to the fifth power times as wide as earth how many times as wide as the sun is the kw all right so think about it you're going to use some of these rules from previous lessons and let me know how you do i'm here to help you so until next time, please stay safe. You're loved and you cared about. And we are wishing you the best over this weekend and beyond. Take care. Bye.